Hello class, welcome back to the first day of week 3. Hope you have a great weekend. In today's lecture, I hope we will be able to complete the load characteristic and to conclude the chapter 2 of the textbook. Remember, on Friday, we talk about the load and loss factors. We also talk about the relationship between the metering infrastructure and the possibility to relate load loss factor from load factors which is the data we can get it from substation SCADA system at the feeder head. I am going to talk about one example that will relate to the loss and load factor with the other met metrics we introduced before. As you can see from this picture, we have uh, basically one substation with two feeders. And those two feeders with the lamb load of industry load and residential load, each of those are represented in this two curve. One represent in blue color and one represent in red color. As you can see that this is sort of 12 hour period of time to indicate the lamb load of each of the feeders. So the next figure shown here is actually the uh, coincidental um, demand, which is a di diversity demand, D sub G. And as you can see from this picture, this is the combined version of that two feeder load instead of individual uh, curve that's shown here. So right away you can see that if you were asked to compute the maximum diversity factor, basically what you have to do is to use this figure and figure out what's the maximum value throughout that 12 hours period of the time. And in this case, obviously, it's 3,500 kilowatt, which you can say that is 3.5 megawatt. And the second question about uh, this uh, question is related to diversity factor, which is the F sub D. And the F sub D definition is the sum of all individual uh, load, which is a non-coincidental demand as shown here. And as you can see, the individual maximum value will be for the blue curve, uh, is 2000 kilowatt and for the red curve is 2000 kilowatt so basically what you need to do is to sum up bo both individually for the denominator value which is 2000 plus 2000 and the denominator value which is the maximum value of the uh, coincidental uh, factors demand which is 3500 in this case so since we already found out two of them, so this in this case diversity factor can be computed uh, from this uh, calculation, which is 4,000 divided by 3,500, that gives you 1.143 ratio. The next question is to find out the load factors. So recall what the load factor definition would be: uh, the average divided by the maximum value over a certain period of time. So first, we have to find out the average total demand. In this case, this is the total demand under the curve here. So we have to find out the total power uh, under this 12-hour uh, period of time. In this case, you have 6 times 1,000. So between 12 to 6, that's a 6-hour times 1,000. And then there's a 10 times 3,500. So that is about the 10 hours different for this case. And then multiply by the 3,500. And then the, uh, the next power of it will be 6 times time 2500 so that's a 2500 times the 6 hours and then lastly, lastly will be the uh, the last part of it which is a 1000 times that 2 hours so and then by having all of this divided by 24 hours that give you the average number so the average number will be the sum of all of this uh, kilowatt hours right so because the area under the curve is a kilowatt hours Kilowatt hours, uh, some of them divide by 24 hours, that give you the average demand of uh, approximately 2400 um, kilowatt. So once you find out the average of that uh, curve, what you need to do next is to find out the load factor. In this case, the load factor can be uh, simply computed based on the ratio that we defined earlier, which is the average divided by the maximum value. So in this case, we already compute the average and then the maximum value for that demand which is obviously we found it earlier 3500 so uh, the load factor can be simply computed as uh, 0.690 uh, in this case 
Now, this question introduces also a different kind of uh, uh, approach how we're going to use the loss factors uh, to, to find out the loss factor in this case. So, remember the uh, last lecture when we go through all this uh, loss factor and load factor and how you can um, infer information for loss factor from load factor. So, now here we go. We know the load factor in this case is already computer. So, um, assuming that this is an urban area parameters, which we can actually take that equation from our last finding, which is uh, with 0 0.3 um, load factor plus 0 0.7 load factor square. So in this case, you can simply plug in the load factor value with that coefficient and the loss factor can be simply estimated. In this case, is 0 0.5403. Now, I think the, what's new about this question is to find out the annual couple losses if the losses at the peak load is equal to 1.1 percent. So First of all, you have to find out what will be the total loss would be uh, for the loss, and and you as you can see that that's 3,500 kilowatt times 0 0.01, which is the one percent that give you 35 kilowatt. And then remember, recall the loss factor definition again. So the loss factor is actually the um, the average divided by the maximum value of the loss factors. So what you need to do is. Uh, uh, flip this over and find out what is the loss factor maximum value right so you have that 35k times 0 0.5403 um, which is uh, coming from this uh, loss factor value that give you uh, the average number of 0 uh, 18.91 kilowatt right so the maximum here means the peak uh, load in this case. So this is a peak value. So you you exchange this information uh, by multiplying these two that give you the average load factor. Now the the question you have to make sure that you understand the question uh, accurately. You say find annual copper losses. Annual annual is a key. So first thing that you have to remember is that how many hours we have per year. So it basically is 24 hours multiplied by 365 that give you the uh, the magic number 8760. Then uh, once you find out this value, that, that simply multiplied by the 18.91 uh, kilowatt that give you the annual couple losses, which is 165.647 kilowatt. So this will conclude the uh, example for what I have uh, for this chapter. What I'm going to talk about that uh, next is the uh, Michigan Tech load campus wide uh, metering data. So uh, in this picture, I just want to give you a quick overview about what how we can get data. And as I said before, we have the feeder head, which is the substation um, RTU, and then sometimes. Um, if there's an overhead line as shown in this picture, you have the switch, you have the uh, what's so called feeder remote terminal unit with all this uh, PLC controller. And what uh, in realistic setup is that if you have a feeder, as you can see, this um, consists of hundreds of distribution transformers and you have multiple um, FRTU1, FRTU2, FRTU3, and FRTU4. So this is a uh, very typical setup if uh, a utility is implementing their system with a uh, distribution management system, right? So these are the metering data that we can acquire from the system. However, this picture doesn't consist of the smart meter. So as you can see, the little uh, circle around this um, um, curve is that there is no uh, further information after the distribution transformer. So this can be only including um, the distribution transform only and only include the primary network. Doesn't include the secondary part of the distribution network. So uh, presuming that there are no AMI metering infrastructure, then it's not possible for us to find out how much the individual load would be for each uh, customer in this case. Here's another perspective for you to see the differences uh, between uh, this picture and the last 
uh, figures. So this figure actually uh, will show you about the metering points of the uh, the solid uh, circle shown here uh, is the uh, metering point around the primary side of the distribution system. And then if we have the uh, smart meter deployed at each uh, customer side, then this will become uh, observable. So as you can see that there are a certain degree of the redundancy between primary side and the secondary side of the dis distribution system. Um, so um, distribution, what we also care about is the future gro uh, load growth in this case. So sometimes we might have to do some sort of prediction and sometimes the load does grow, but it doesn't reflect at the uh, computer s system in the control room. So which means that sometimes we might miss some of the uh, load modeling at some part of the distribution network and this is a part of the research problem we always do uh, in in, uh, in academia. So this is a overall picture about how it looks like um, for the q area. So as you can see that the orange color indicate the primary side of the distribution um, feeder and then the green part indicate the distribution substation. And the red part shown here is the distribution substation at Michigan Tech. And um, this is a much more busy diagram uh, sh shown in this case is that we have a thousand of customer um, in the Kiwina area as you can see that there are combinations of uh, three single phase distribution transformers, uh, two single phase, and then uh, all the feeder are operate in radio and unbalanced manner, as you can see. So to give you the perspective, how it looks like is that the UP distribution, uh, the UPCO distribution network with approximately 10,000 of distribution transformer and each of the uh, distribution transformer is probably uh, connected with about five customers in average. And the peak load is about 160 megawatt, and then the average is about 120 megawatt with more than uh, 50,000 customers. So in this region, we don't have smart meter, um, we don't have the uh, DMS system. So as you can see, that the only information you can infer is coming from the substation uh, SCADA system. Michigan Tech campus have about 7,000 students. So uh, statistically, from what we can observe is that there is about 7 megawatt peak load at each uh, uh, at Michigan Tech and then the average is close to about 5 megawatt throughout the year. We have deployed approximately 11 buildings with the AMI meter. We call it smart meter or advanced metering infrastructures. So this is an IP based um, communication infrastructure that we deploy to constantly pull the data at the rate of uh, every uh, 15 minutes. Um, some We get the data from uh, kilowatt hours, kilowatt, etc. Um, so you will get a chance to talk with uh, the facility guys um, at Michigan Tech when you go to the field trip. Uh, to get a bigger picture about how it looks like in terms of what are the building management system they deploy and how they uh, uh, implement them. So this is a drawing that I drew uh, some time ago that you, as you can see that this is a breaker uh, that you have meter uh, spread out throughout the entire uh, distribution uh, ge geographical region and each feeder will have approximately close to 500 to 1,000 distribution transformer. So in this case, uh, in, at Michigan Tech, we don't have that many because we have buildings. But if you are talking about uh, a residential area that might have uh, a large uh, uh, numbers of uh, distribution transformer per feeder. And sometimes each distribution transformer can handle up to eight feeders. So depending upon the uh, size of the power transformer at the substation, um, sometimes it's not big enough, then you probably will have about four feeders at, at most. In this page, I'm just going to give you an overview about what um, we have gone through uh, 
previously and this is probably a, a good piece of information that you will be able to use for uh, the next exam um, this is a good summary uh, that have basic definitions of uh, the statistic of demand as you can see there's a demand demand interval uh, maximum demand diversified demand co also called coincidental demand d sub g and non coincidental demand d sub i which is the individual um, customer and the other 10 basic factor include demand factors we talked about that before utilization factor how much the uh, a distribution transformer has been utilized um, uh, plan factors that's in uh, the plan factor for generator and then we also have the coincident factor for diversity factor load factor those are the pretty typical statistics we use as a functions of uh, d sub i and d sub g which is the diversified demand and non-diversified demand and all of these are actually as a functions of max value for each of the uh, de type demand tab and then we also have the contribution factors and the contribution factors is actually relate to uh, how much is, is being contribute for each of the diversified factors and then you also have the load factors and loss factors so so we talked about that last lecture and how load factor uh, loss factor can relate to a load factor because we can get the data from the SCADA system uh, in the feeder head uh, at substation and then the last one will be the allocation factor this is basically uh, based on the tree structure we see what are the meters data at that time divided by the total number of transformer rating and then once you want to find out the prorated uh, value at each distribution transformer under that subsystem you will be able to use the AF the allocation factor uh, to scale that value out.